Hi everyone, it's uh, January 15th. This is Don Prezant um, for what's now called Badge Clinic, formerly the Open Recognition Alliance uh, Community Calls. And I'm kicking off uh, the 2020 schedule talking about a particular project. And uh, we're just gonna roll into that right now. I have to uh, share the screen to do that. Uh, so let me, actually let me present first and I'll share probably makes more sense. So sharing the screen. So can everyone see that? I guess I'll move that off. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Great. Good. Okay. So uh, micro certification business models. I'll talk a little bit about that micro certification term in a bit. Um, and um, uh, this is a, essentially a preview. The, the intention here uh, is not to steal the thunder from the release on February 21st. It's to get um, in, uh, validation, further validation for what um, I've been sharing with a number of people along the way. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but really looking forward to feedback today, although I can't really sh share the report as a total. As a total. Uh, totality. Um, I can show you some uh, some um, excerpts from it. Um, just click here. So first of all, a little bit about eCampus Ontario, the the uh, organization that we're doing this for. It's a not-for-profit. Uh, it's funded by the government of Ontario, and it's intended to be a center of excellence for educational technology, fluency in educational technology. One of its big things is uh, open open educational resources, OER, and open practices increasingly. Uh, but it's essentially uh, providing leadership in these areas for the 45 publicly funded colleges and universities in Ontario. Um, Ontario's uh, Canada's biggest province, got well over 30% of the population, big area in the center of the country. Um, and, um, and a lot of uh, well-known universities in that area. Um, this is just a page from their website talking about, again, micro certifications. Um, their, their use of this term right now, it's possibly a transitional term, but what they were noticing was there was a lot of uh, friction over the term of uh, um, micro-credentials and people saying, what is a micro-credential or this is a micro-credential. So they decided to uh, um, invent a new term uh, that would hopefully ha have not as much baggage uh, and wait for some of the smoke to clear. So um, eCampus Ontario has been working to build a recognition ecosystem since about 2017. Uh, began with um, an open badge forum in 2017, set up a sandbox working with CanCred, uh, where eight uh, um, institutions, four colleges and four universities started uh, working with um, uh, open badges as micro-credentials, um, developed a program called, uh, oops, sorry, um, Ontario Extend, and this is a really interesting implementation of it um, in uh, working with uh, one of the affordances of the system, which was getting um, educators to engage with open resources and then develop, uh, do some reflection about that, develop something, and then apply for a badge showing that they had uh, achieved um, the, the outcomes of, uh, of these particular modules. And there's six modules leaning up to um, a technology-enabled educator. So it was uh, showed up. Uh, um, badge applications with evidence that could track with the badge and then a milestone badge for this uh, uh, technology enabled educator. So it's a really interesting uh, implementation of it. I, I mentioned the open badge forums. We uh, kicked that off actually initially with uh, KPU. Rajiv is joining us from KPU. Um, um, we sort of in, invented first the um, open badges forum in, in BC in early 2017, began in Ontario in 2017, ran another in 2019. And then um, in 2020, it's uh, being relabeled the micro certification forum. And that's February 21st when I'm going to be presenting this report. They're also currently running 14 pilot projects for uh, micro certifications where uh, institutions had to partner with uh, I, an, an industry organization, and uh, people are going to be hearing about those pilots on February 21st as well. They developed the microcertification principles and framework, which I'm going to show you in detail in the next couple of slides, and then this report, which is the uh, microcertification business models. 
Um, so principles and framework, they pulled together a working group of employers and post-secondary um, uh, representatives, and this is intended to be high-level guidance. So the idea being that it should be about employability, uh, that the, they should be verifiable, um, that uh, it, they should be learner-centered, in fact, learner-owned, and uh, that they should enable uh, pathways uh, for, for learning. Uh, then the bottom half of this is um, that it uh, should be a trusted issuer um, and that uh, uh, skill sets should be uh, targeted. So they mentioned ESCO. Uh, Simone was just talking about ESCO now, but also in Ontario, they have something called the um, Essential Employability Skills uh, Framework, which is uh, developed out of uh, it's a Canadian um, uh, research, big Canadian research project, Essential Skills for the workforce, uh, which is actually itself being revised now with the more soft skills approach um, and uh, will, will likely uh, feed into that. But a lot of that is about the transversal skills we talk about for employability. Um, outcomes should be recognizing outcomes should involve summative assessment. So that's very consistent with um, a recent report uh, developed by Bev Oliver that I'm kind of treating as a gold standard currently for uh, uh, micro-credentialing. Uh, I'm, I'm very impressed by it. And then the, these last two um, should be compatible with transcripts where possible. That's a, a nice to have. And then this notion of uh, partner endorsement, um, which uh, is one of the one of the affordances of CanCred and is no doubt coming to other platforms because it is uh, part of the standard. So um, CCBYSA, uh, that's how uh, eCampus Ontario rolls, and that's actually how this um, how this report will be published. So uh, the research project, um, the idea was to take a snapshot of international practices and I was instructed to go well beyond, uh, can definitely not look inside Canada, look beyond Canada and even go beyond North America. Um, and and the, the intention was to help Ontario institutions wrap their heads around it because there was a certain amount of friction in terms of them getting themselves started, uh, noticed generally and also during the sandbox. Um, and then indicate paths to um, this notion of an ecosystem, a recognition ecosystem, which is again a, a concept that, that that appears slow to be uh, to take uh, to take root. The idea was to be representative, not exhaustive. That would take far too long and would be instantly obsolete. Um, help institutions see themselves, um, answer some of the things that are holding them back, and get some insights about um, how to get started. Uh, one of the things they want, they did something a while back on shared services, um, and they wanted something similar, just like a one-page image that people can see and, and sort of see themselves. Oh, okay, I see the models, and we're maybe a bit of this, and a bit of this, and a bit of this. So um, we competed for this uh, research project. Uh, we'd like to think we were uh, selected for these reasons. Um, um, certainly uh, been obsessed with uh, open badges, open recognition since 2012, developed a, a fair amount of connections over the last number of years, and a, a lot of contextual knowledge, not only of Ontario, but also of what uh, eCampus Ontario is about and what it's been doing. So the method uh, was to uh, leverage sort of the, uh, the, the knowledge that uh, we already have about e um, about what's out there, what's what's involved, uh, some of the people that we've been, some of the organizations and use cases that we've been featuring over the years on ORA community calls, for example, and then do uh, supplement that with a bit of um, mostly Googling, uh, secondary research, um, and then to move into sort of more, what would be more like primary research, uh, would be selected interviews to validate that model, walk through it with people, say, you know, does this make sense? Uh, do you see any gaps? Do you see any red flags? And then to um, talk to those people in more depth about um, their particular use cases. And in, in most cases, it's, it's organizations actually issuing, but we also touch base with some other, some other organizations that we see feeding into the ecosystem. Um, based on all this research to revise that model, um, um, develop the use cases in more in more depth, and uh, and that's actually where we're working right now. It's just sort of leveling those use cases, making them uh, more compatible with each other, 
so that they, uh, they will make sense in a final report. And then to uh, present that report on February 21st, maybe do a last round of uh, validation and then release the report CCBYSA. Um, so uh, among the barriers to address, here are some that were fed to me by the, um, the team, that uh, the coordination team. Uh, will they devalue academic credentials? It's so complicated, nobody's talking about the same thing. Um, uh, can we do this on top of everything else we're doing? And are we really just a, a servant to employers or are we about something else? I mean, a lot of these are gonna be um, familiar to people um, watching this. The interesting one down below, you know, double charging uh, students um, and ways of approaching that uh, and this notion of, uh, if it's quality, maybe it'll cost too much uh, as, an, as an incremental cost. Um, so I was given a sort of a, a high-end list of questions from various people, and this is my, the way I would have boiled it down, is to say, you know, what drove you to start? Um, what was that journey about? Uh, what model have you ended up with? Um, and how does, it, how does it match what you're about? And then who's, how are, how are things decided? And, you know, we have people on the call today who are just going through that notion of governance as we speak. Um, and then, you know, what worked, what didn't work, what do you wish you had done? Um, you know, what would you do differently? And where are you going from here? So um, this is um, an ugly version of what would be the one pager. And I'll just sort of sit for a bit on this. Basically, um, I, um, say that you would start on the left, the idea being a department or it could be a spin-off of the institution. Oh, it, yeah, and the main thing is this is all, this is all higher education centric, okay? So it's, you know, if you're a, a nonprofit or a large organization, this would not necessarily speak to you. So this is the idea of I'm, I'm a higher education um, um, I'm, I'm a leader looking at this. So um, are you just starting it as a continuing education department or is it a spin-off, something like, uh, like Deacon Co? Um, or I have an example about Swinburne Engineering Department who did a sort of a, a professional practice bachelor uh, degree that I'll be talking about a little bit more. Um, possibly you started as a solo institution uh, or maybe morphed into a solo institution uh, doing this. So Madison College uh, started with the continuing education department, uh, has now morphed into uh, doing it uh, across the college, and they've also set up a digital credentials institute uh, that's sort of part service bureau, uh, part uh, research uh, group for them. Curtin in, um, uh, university is uh, been an early leader. Uh, RMIT, we actually have a detailed profile of. Um, then just sort of moving forward in terms of uh, consortium, this idea would be peer-led, peer governance, um, and uh, the idea of distributed leadership, work by consensus, et cetera. So I have some uh, examples there. Justin uh, provided the one for the uh, university learning store has helped supplement the information for that. And I have a, just a quick snapshot of um, uh, one of the uh, Territoire Apprenant, which is a uh, boat, Bajo Vera Tous, in uh, Nouvelle Aquitaine in uh, France. Um, and then the, the this notion of NGO led. So Simone was around in the early days of uh, Bester, uh, which is led by Chineka, um, which is a consortium of uh, um, research institutes and universities in Italy. There's also the SurfNet. Uh, we were talking about France Ward just recently. Education Design Lab is a slightly different model. That's basically a, a foundation uh, running um, uh, uh, an operation uh, and bringing, being the leader and, and recruiting uh, organizations into it. And Colorado Community College System, Brenda Perea, that's where she got her start, was working with the Triple CS. Uh, in terms of industry leadership, the notion here is that the industry is a little more in charge. So um, there's a curriculum attached that the industry brings. So IBM has their Skills Academy and uh, uh, students engage with the curriculum. It's up to the institution to map that curriculum back to their own curriculum and figure out how it, how it matches. Uh, Salesforce is doing something similar, albeit with uh, not with open badges, but their own badge system. But again, there is credit value uh, uh, that 
either is directly related to that or maps back to credit programs. And then uh, Microsoft is another example of that. So below that, you sort of see the, oops, excuse me, you see the, um, um, where, where we're talking about, um, you know, things like effort, risk. Um, so for example, a, a solo unit could end up having its hand chopped off for various reasons. And actually we have a, an example of that with the Swinburne engineering department, solo institution, you know, there are some risks involved with getting set up and the, the, the kinds of opinions that are involved. And there could be some friction going forward on a wide, on a wide front within an institution, for example, a consortium, it's great to have that, that, um, uh, consensus, but maybe that's a little hard to achieve and maybe it's not quite as agile, but when you move to more, to more agile or, or, uh, uh, centralized, uh, versions, uh, you can run into issues where it's, it's hard to be yourself within that, uh, both in terms of branding and in terms of what, what you might want to be doing in terms of autonomy. Um, maybe I, I can just sort of stop briefly and get, get some initial reactions from that, uh, if you want to sign on. I haven't been watching the uh, comments, I'm afraid. I don't know if there are any comments. Any thoughts initially? Let me just check. If, if not, I can, I can certainly just keep moving. So maybe I'll just do that. Um, okay. So um, just moving forward then, um, the other element here, so these are the, the business models, but the, the, the point is like, what, what are you doing uh, and how are you doing it? Um, so this is a, an attempt and I've split it over, actually it's two pages. The key dimensions are ones that were picked up on by the coordinating team at eCampus Ontario. The additional dimensions are the ones I'm still hanging on to because I think they're significant. Um, and uh, I've been uh, sharing all of these to all the respondents we've been interviewing. So uh, what is your purpose? Is it to get into higher education? Is it to get into employment? Is it maybe for uh, providing for student success, things like um, um, ethics, you know, student ethics, uh, student, um, 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 I cite my sources, things like that. Uh, or is it uh, for what I sometimes call recidivist learning, uh, lifelong learning, coming back into the academy to get that next um, um, thing that's going to help you in your career? In terms of the context, uh, we have different examples that would be core curriculum, uh, uh, mapped directly to the curriculum, uh, cross-curricular, so uh, typically non-credit, and then what I'm calling open curricular, thanks to Penn State, who came up the original version of this, uh, the idea of uh, starting with a MOOC and then maybe doing that uh, open or for free. And then when you want to be assessed, paying for that. Uh, and then custom curricular, that would include things like contract training and work integrated learning. And then over on the right would be more like um, Learner, uh, learner driven, what uh, sometimes it's called hootagogy, uh, that hasn't really made it into North America, but uh, somewhat popular term in Australia and New Zealand. Um, the autonomous learner and claiming credentials. And then I've included even Serge's uh, dream badge there saying, I want to be this, and I'm gonna add uh, value to this aspiration over time in the badge. So we're trying to accommodate uh, the full spectrum. Uh, in terms of formality, that's pretty straightforward. The thing uh, I've included in the middle there is the idea of maybe you want to make it uh, formalizable or plurable. So you uh, use some rigor putting it together without necessarily going through the Senate uh, in the institution right off the, right off the hop. So it's a way of, of uh, providing some future value for your uh, um, credentials. Uh, or maybe you just say, we're not going to go after credit for that. So assessment, um, <laughs> caution people to say that um, uh, this is descriptive, it's not intended to be uh, prescriptive. So um, standardized multiple choice exams, I had a lot of pushback about that. Um, there are some people who really subscribe to that, other people who don't. Um, but often you'll see uh, what I would call non-standardized uh, testing within the program. That would be when the instructor, for example, puts together 
some uh, quizzes or, or examination questions in the course. But I, I would call that non-standardized because it wouldn't necessarily be following an ISO 17024 2012 standard for identifying the scope of a of a domain and and then the uh, uh, elements of uh, how people how you would uh, uh, demonstrate the uh, the uh, competencies within that domain, but could be have some rigor. And then other kinds of exams, and then this big one that would be flexible assessment. Uh, in terms of skills frameworks, we talk a lot about the T-shaped learner. eCampus Ontario talks about that, and uh, uh, Education Design Lab is is sort of using that as a model ongoing with employers. So the idea of horizontal transversal skills, often contextualized by the domain that they're in, but then also you have the the deep domain skills, the expertise. And Education Design Lab has uh, has levels for that sort of job entry, mid level, and senior level. Um, and then uh, you could have external, um, if you're a large enough organization, say uh, government or a, or a Fortune 100 company, you would have your own frameworks. And then you'd have industry industry ones as well. So Sophia might be one of those uh, um, systems for an information age. Uh, portability, is it portable inside the institution, uh, across institutions maybe, um, through some kinds of uh, mutual agreements, or is there a more centralized model there? The one I keep on bringing up, and I'm not sure how current it, it is now, is the Credit Bank in uh, BC, which is now sitting at uh, Tonkin Rivers University, I think. The idea there is uh, every, all subscribers to the Credit Bank agree that these courses have a certain credit value and uh, they're, they're put in there and they, they um, agree to exchange them. Um, and then, oh, but you could also have something like that would be, that would be non-credit. And then uh, portability, so standards-based. So Madison College early on started standardizing its, its badges, starting with an industry standard, talking about how uh, badges would demonstrate uh, alignment with that standard and sort of working back from there. That really helps with uh, uh, um, uh, acceptance. And then you could have more pragmatic ones. And the one I often uh, cite here is the uh, Colorado Community College system where they had two kinds of badges and I always forget how they work, but or how the labels uh, work. But one of them basically say, uh, employers say, yeah, that's a good badge. Uh, we'll, we'll recognize that. And another one where they would say, okay, this will change the experience of the person coming to us. This might mean they get an interview uh, for sure. Uh, so um, that uh, sort of two levels of that. So authentication, um, a lot of people concerned about um, fraud um, and uh, things like uh, invigilation of assessments. Uh, are you the person, the right person taking it? Uh, you're coming to us with this credential. Are you the person who holds this credential? There's ways of looking at that, and there's some work actually uh, that uh, um, uh, Bev Oliver did in the back of this, um, as I say, this this thing I keep on mentioning, this report, uh, just talking about quality aspects about that related to authentication. A lot of um, uh, attention on that uh, uh, on that aspect right now, which. Uh, mystify some of us in the community because there's so many other aspects that uh, are, are about value uh, and um, other multivalences that can uh, that can help with authentication. And actually, Bev Oliver speaks to that as well. Payment, um, in terms of, uh, is it included? Is it uh, included in student fees or tuition? Is it um, something that would be more open curricular MOOC like where you engage and then when you want the assessment you uh, you go and, and and pay for that or is it something where uh, it just starts off as pay as you go and uh, Deacon recognition of professional practice is a is a great example of that you pay 500 Australian dollars and you assemble your evidence package and that's what you pay for is the assessment you either get it or you don't and they say it's more rigorous than uh, your typical uh, master's degree so when you go through that uh, mapped process of multiple badges plus a certain amount of domain uh, delivery of learning. Uh, so um, those are the uh, those were the key dimensions so the additional dimensions level of complexity is uh, something that's uh, one of the reasons I think it's on this page is a lot less uh, uh, prevalent here in uh, uh, North America 
We don't have uh, those kinds of national qualification frameworks. Canada for multiple reasons, but also the US. Um, um, in Ontario, there's something called the OQF, which I believe is 13 levels, all within post-secondary, so it's quite complex. Um, uh, but people don't really talk about those. So level of complexity, we talk about internal, uh, you know, uh, all too often bronze, silver, gold, but could be things like the fundamental advanced, et cetera. Um, we, we've mentioned the uh, qualification framework. So European qualification framework often used as a meta framework. So you might have your Scottish qualification framework mapping to that in different clusters. Same thing. Um, um, similarly with the uh, AQF can be cross mapped or the NZQF, I should add the NZQF to that. In the US, an attempt to, I think, emulate that is the Connecting Credentials that was funded by Lumina um, and it has eight levels of uh, uh, sophistication um, and uh, these uh, kinds of transversal skills that they're talking about and or domain uh, levels within that. Granularity, um, effort hours is often what it comes down to. Effort hours sometimes translated to actual credits because those sort of delivery time. Um, so um, for example, uh, the European MOOC consortium is talking about a minimum of 100 effort hours, including the assessment, um, to be what they call a micro-credential. Uh, but uh, also Australia and New Zealand institutions have have specific uh, times and uh, yeah, effort, effort hours of doing that. I'm still struggling with uh, what I'm calling units of competency. So if you have a communications badge, how significant is that communications badge? Did you just take a 30 minute um, course about it? Uh, did you uh, assemble a little bit of evidence? Did you have one piece of evidence about it? Uh, and what, uh, what different um, areas within that communication competency have you demonstrated? Is it just a presentation? Or are you also showing how you can talk one-to-one -one, uh, or, or write? So um, that's one that um, in the vocational education in Australia, they talk about units of competence. Um, so that's an internal domain, but it's typically not transferable. It's not a portable concept, that notion of a unit of competence in terms of the actual size of it. Um, I'll move on because I haven't really solved it. Um, but interestingly, RMIT has developed uh, what they call, um, I think it's cred points. Um, that's what I, what I should say. They're not just points. But what they've done is they've come up with a rubric that combines uh, effort, uh, complexity uh, level, and um, rigor of assessment. Um, and um, that adds up to either five or 10 or 15 or, or 100. And the top one you can get is 400, which is typically four times 100. And they call those so-called uh, meso credentials, not micro. Um, and then just this idea um, that I think um, Bester was the first one to do is this, the idea of it's, it's an envelope. It's a, it's a container uh, for a credential. And um, uh, University of Milano Bococca was the first one who came up with this to say, our master's degree, we want to tell the story because we're a smaller institution. We want to tell the story how good our master's degree is. We're going to put it in uh, a digital credential using the open badge framework and people will see how good our credential is and this, it will be good for the students. Now they've gone on and since now they're sort of co-publishing um, um, uh, credentials and, and block certs. But uh, that, was where, that was where that notion began. But also since then, World Education Services, uh, based in New York, but uh, quite big in Canada, uh, is using them for uh, uh, reports on uh, post-secondary credentials, uh, typically for immigrants. And SAIT has started to publish their, uh, their um, diplomas. Uh, that's the Southern Alberta Institute of Technology. Um, these aren't, uh, my understanding is the, those aren't open badges. So credential type, um, this is one where uh, I've imported this from uh, outside of academe because I, I, I thought it would be useful for people to have. And this is where I, I start talking about the international standards uh, like ISO 17024, that's the certification one. That's the notion that you award uh, the, the person this recognition that they have this competency set 
and it's not based on whatever course they took. It's based on the scoping of the domain and, and the work on what would demonstrate this person's mastery of that domain, and that's a certification. So it's, a, it's an actual standard. I think most uh, post-secondaries are involved in what, what I would call assessment-based certificates. Um, that's the idea where you take a course and then you demonstrate you've met the outcomes of that course. Uh, perhaps you have uh, uh, a uh, RPL function for that where people can challenge the outcomes of the course without having to take the entire course, but it is based on, on an actual course. Participation based, uh, you've, met, you've seen the micro certification principles. Uh, that's been uh, degraded, I guess, or, or, or what's the word? Um, yeah, it's not, uh, not prioritized. Uh, Typically, they'll say that's not a micro-credential. The only pushback I have, and I'm prepared to live with this, is that continuing medical education, those doctors who can cut you open, um, actually take professional development and are not always tested. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. And the, they still count for continuing um, uh, med medical education units. Um, but that said, uh, it's, a, it's a minor point. And then the other forms of achievement, which if uh, Serge were here today, he would be talking a lot more about. Um, so then delivery, this is kind of standard. Stackability, um, so is there any stackability uh, at all uh, built into it? Is there uh, just a prescribed kind of stacking? Or do we have something more like uh, path, uh, pathways that might be emergent, um, um, sort of more peer-based um, and uh, clusterable? Um, what do we have there? There's not a, a there's not a huge amount of um, well, there's there's some examples of that in the, in the research that we've done. For quality, um, that's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, you know, one of the um, uh, external quality systems out there is called Quality Matters. Has pros and cons of uh, um, getting involved with something like that. Uh, somebody was just uh, railing on about it to me the other day. Funding model, is this just something you're just trying yourself uh, with internal funding? Have you got some external funding? What happens when that runs out? Um, and then more, this is more over in uh, New Zealand where this is playing out. Um, is it government funded? So uh, badges are now part of, um, sorry, micro-credentials are now part of the New Zealand qualifications framework, which means when they get one approved, that, that means students can be funded to take that, that micro-credential. And New Zealand is pushing harder, Otago is pushing harder, the idea of unbundling that. So typically it's a full meal deal experience. Uh, take the course, get the credential. They're pushing for unbundling um, so that they have uh, more flexibility in delivering this. Although they, deal, they do generally still uh, deliver the full meal deal uh, because students tend to want it. Endorsement, um, still somewhat undeveloped. Um, it's in the standard. It's um, I haven't heard too many examples outside of Open Badge Factory, Open Badge uh, Cancred Factory of using it, but it will be coming uh, on more and more. Uh, learner support. This is one that was uh, I was encouraged to add uh, by Otago because they're very much inspired by Southern New Hampshire uh, University, <clears throat> whose model is. Uh, uh, not waiting for you to ask, but it's calling you up saying, so can I help you? Uh, can I help you register? Can I help you uh, get started with your program? Or very much a sort of a concierge or a, a, a coach uh, way of uh, student support. Um, so any questions at the moment? How am I doing? Ooh, I'm running out of time. I think I need to move a little faster. But that's, that's essentially the model, those three. Um, you know, the, the problems going across and then these dimensions going across them. The other thing I wanted to end up with was just to show you uh, what we're looking at with reference to these models. This is a snapshot of the um, of, uh, who we've, um, a combination of the secondary and the primary research. So these are the organizations we're speaking to all the way down to industry led. And then um, I've had conversations with uh, Simone, for example, also uh, Jeff Borer over at IMS Global, um, Serge Rave at uh, Rocanetra, the Open Recognition Alliance. And we're also looking at this thing out of LinkedIn called the, in, uh, grandly called the International Council on Badges and Credentials, uh, which hopefully will lead to LinkedIn 
uh, badges being shared uh, more easily on LinkedIn, among other things. Um, so I wanted to wind up just by showing you how some of these play out. Uh, Swinburne Engineering uh, set up a so-called Bachelor of Engineering practice where essentially they set up a company that would uh, do projects for, a, for uh, employers. And so there were real world projects that um, the, they were able to map um, the um, tasks that the students were performing to their actual, actual curriculum. They worked on this for about three or four years, uh, developed some really interesting uh, um, techniques and uh, uh, elements that are now being folded back into the institution, but it was shut down. I'm not quite sure the reasons why, uh, possibly for complexity, possibly because there might have been some perceptions of competing with the private sector um, uh, unfairly. But just to, to show you, that is their, uh, that's their mapping, that's their framework uh, of it. Um, and hopefully be able to share that as part of the thing. I can't really blow it up and show you now, but uh, basically breaks out into um, domain practices, uh, engineering processes, but also soft skills and, and things of that nature and ways of demonstrating those. Um, where they weren't able to uh, work with, uh, 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 sorry, uh, yeah, work with a client to develop a particular skill, they had sort of a backup where um, they would uh, do something um, in, uh, uh, in a more generic fashion. RMIT, uh, Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, uh, as a sort of whole of institution approach, uh, very much about transition to employment, uh, the learning context that's embedded. They have different kinds of um, um, uh, micro-credentials. They have what they call uh, RMIT creds. Uh, they tend to be aligned to their uh, transversal skills, which are now being revamped. Um, and um, the students, this has actually been wildly popular with students as an extracurricular activity, but it can also be embedded in courses, what they call a lift and shift, where they take what would be an open cred thing about um, working with others and drop it into the course just before they go out to uh, work on a group project, something like that. They're supported by the AQF. Um, they have, um, um, this is free for undergraduate students, but they're also talking about making the um, open creds um, available to external people and folding those into future, uh, something called future skills, which is more of a MOOC-like um, uh, offering that will again, can ladder up into uh, formal, formal education, formal recognition. So just mindful of time here, I want to keep moving. Otago, Edubits, I've mentioned them. Again, it's a solo institution. Um, and um, basically uh, cross-curricular and um, um, uh, so that's the example with um, uh, sustainable development goals. Um, typically summative assessment, a lot of evidence packages. Uh, they're, they're working out some really interesting ways, efficient ways of uh, evaluating evidence packages quickly online um, and so similar taking up, um, lifting off uh, some of the uh, work that was done in uh, Deakin University early on, which is also an online delivery. Um, so portability, they, they have an advantage in that Otago is part of, that's actually the headquarters for OERU, the Open uh, Education Resources Univer Universitas, of which in Canada, Humber is a member and there's also a Danish institution uh, uh, University College of, uh, starts with an A, sorry, I don't re recall the name of it. But the idea is people can take these edu bits, they're, they're based on um, Otago's, um, um, they're based on the New Zealand qualifications framework and they can map into uh, an um, international credit exchange system through OERU. Um, and that should lead to some really interesting things for them down the line. So, um, and then just um, spoke with Caroline Belon Ménager, who many of you know either from Epic or just from in France. They are developing um, uh, a, a sort of a, uh, I, would, I would still say a, an education led consortium, education centered consortium right now, reaching out across sectors, developing a vision for what open badges could be 
in the region to set up this notion of a, uh, a learning territory. Um, and um, they're still feeling their way. This is a little more emergent, uh, but uh, they are some, they're reaching out into adult learning um, uh, organizations, et cetera, and increasingly to employers in the area, this area of Nouvelle uh, Aquitaine, which is kind of uh, central West France. Uh, the next steps um, uh, basically need to complete the report, need to sort of level these, these um, 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 profiles that we're doing. I'm having trouble with that just because I'm, I'm a little too interested, I think, in the, in the content. And that's just a question of moving it back down, uh, uh, bringing in some of the supplementary um, organizations that we're talking about, like, uh, like Digitary, like um, uh, IMS, and some of those other organizations. And then to deliver, this is my visual goal, is to deliver the final on uh, February 21st in Toronto. Uh, and that will be the designation, uh, CCBYSANC, uh, and with eCampus Ontario as the host of it. So that's it. Sorry, a lot of, lot of words, short amount of time. Um, happy to take any questions at this point. So, I, this, this is great information, Don, so I'm, I'm excited to see this. Um, and I came in a little late because I was teaching, so you might have addressed this already. Is this going to be in a research article so that we can see it, or are you going to be, that's one question. And my other question is, is there any kind of numbers associated with those tables to kind of get an indication of how common these different kinds of things are, and if there are patterns across these various different ways of doing micro-credentialing? So the first question is, yes, it will be shared. Um, my uh, thought is it will likely be shared. They have a sort of a documents of reports, um, um, a, a reports uh, page on the eCampus Ontario website. So it will be shared CCBYSA. So people can take it and fork it and remix it and uh, build on it, hopefully. One of the ways they could build on it, uh, it is very much qualitative. It's, uh, this is something that was, uh, commissioned late last year and um, actually should be delivered already. So there's not a huge amount of time for it. So uh, that could be a great way to add value to this is just talking about prevalence uh, of it. So um, as I say, um, very much qualitative research. And the, I think part of it is to sort of map out those different dimensions and to, to talk about that. I, I think that that could provide some pretty uh, fertile ground uh, in the future for people um, talking about practices and prevalence. And did you say when that would be available? I, and I ask because we're kind of in the process of making decisions in our program about these kinds of things and wanting to know kind of some of the different models out there. So when would this be available? Well, um, this preview is available now. So the, the link is on the Etherpad. The report, um, as I say, we're finishing it off. It's going to be, um, I, initially, we, we were I just had a meeting about this yesterday, and initially the thought was to release it on the 21st. We're now thinking that the 21st might be a final sort of validation where we present it to the group at the forum and take any final feedback for that and roll it in. So it would be more like uh, the end of February would be uh, the, final, the release of the final document. Great. So um, uh, I'm just uh, trying to see. Yeah, no other questions in the. So if I, is this is this a, a fact bombardment? Uh, <laughs> people uh, having ha having trouble digesting it all, perhaps. So. Um, as I say, the, uh, the, the link to this, um, to this um, presentation is in uh, the Etherpad. I would, be, I would welcome any comments you have on it. Right now, I've, I've set it up uh, as, as read-only, so um, I would encourage you to uh, reach out to me, uh, either at Don Prezant or uh, Don at learningagents.ca to, to with, with any comments you might have, um, and uh, any ways that I can sort of add value to this. Hey, Don, uh, this is Simone. I have a quick question. 
So as part of your uh, investigation is around business models, is it within your scope to also look at really just the economics or how these platforms or micro-credentials are being uh, leveraged in the market from a, I guess, a commercial or a business point of view? Uh, great question. So that is, um, let me just see if I can come up with a quick view here. In some cases, I talk prices and, and how they're covering costs and stuff. So um, if I were uh, talking here, so for example, I'll just quickly share again. Uh, so this is still draft, um, but for, for the Otago one, for example, uh, it's a you know business startup. It's being funded internally. He even talks about how much money has gone into the startup initially and what they're proposing uh, going forward, um, how they're developing you know retail wholesale, and then there's a little bit of talk. Uh, where have I got that? Um, yeah, how they how they develop their 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 programs. So they um, they start advertising in Edubit as they're applying for the um, for the NZQF, and based on the, the uptake, they either go ahead with it or not. Um, so, and if they don't go ahead with it, all they've lost is a day or two of putting together the proposal for the NZQF um, uh, credit. So that's another thing uh, that they do. I'm not sure whether it's this one or the other one on edgy bits that's more focused on um, Otago, is where they um, uh, talk about the cost per edgy bit and how that rolls up into into the um, into the uh, you know other, other credits that could be um, uh, uh, accepted in other jurisdictions. So, um, but yeah, so some of that detail is there, and this is where I'm struggling right now: is how how much of that de uh, detail to include in this initial document, plus provide a supplemental document for people who really want to dive in further. Hopefully, that answers your question somewhat. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, absolutely. And just a follow up quick one on, on, on this, the, the Edubit part. So this is an interesting uh, initiative where they really looked at the uh, official, I guess, the, the quality, the, um, the competence framework or the quality, I guess, assurance framework or not, the, the qualification framework. Have you run into other similar uh, initiatives that have that kind of connection between competence frameworks and, and Micro credentials. Yeah, so I had some discussions about this in Australia, um, and uh, there's this thing called the Noonan Report that you may or may not be familiar with. Um, it was basically, um, and that's actually a link that's in the uh, uh, that's in the RMIT profile. Basically, um, uh, Australian universities talking about micro credentials and their readiness to be mapped to the Australian Qualifications Framework. Yeah. So there was some a lot of feedback came back about that. The, initial, the uh, reaction right now is that it's not ready in Australia. There's not enough uh, consensus about it. So NZQF is somewhat, uh, New Zealand is somewhat unique in this respect. Okay. And Otago is really uh, pushing forward hard on it. Uh, it's an interesting uh, discussion of risk though, because Otago, you know, it's, it's doing a whole of uh, institution initiative. But uh, now there's talk of, of taking all the polytechs in the country and making them into one monster polytech. So, <laughs> so it's like, you know, coming from a deus ex machina, coming from, from outside, um, and they're just trying to roll with those punches. But uh, in some of the early uh, discussions about that, uh, I, what I was told was that uh, this edgy bit thing is something that might bubble up as, as something for all the polytechs, even within this monster. One, so in other words, something to preserve and make sure it floats to the top. Great, forward. thanks a lot. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. So, uh, so a uh, question from Rajiv: uh, Encountered in examples of institutions using a combination of different approaches. You outlined. That's a great point, um, Rajiv, uh, and one I should have emphasized. Yes, very much so. Um, so, um, for example. Um, uh, Otago is part of uh, OERU, um, and if I look here, uh, um, Mohawk, um, Mohawk College in Canada is doing its own 
uh, micro credentials, and they're also working with um, IBM uh, Skills Academy, um, and um, a, and also people are experimenting with um, EduBits and and running their own. Um, uh, just trying to see some other examples here. Um, the university, uh, yeah. So those 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 are some examples off the top of my head. Um, also, for example, uh, Deacon uh, is doing the solo unit, so that's the spin-off Deacon Co, which is the combination of the Con Ed department and this uh, recognition of professional practice unit that came together uh, is now Deacon Co. But also they have Deacon Hallmarks, so that's for graduating students, uh, and so that's for students. Um, um, uh, set up, um, uh, you know, it's, it's paid for for students and it's, uh, students can apply for these employability credentials as they're graduating from their bachelor degrees. So that's just some examples off the top of my head. Um, so very much so that people would see themselves in these different ones and, and might be a different kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, organization. Uh, for example, Mohawk itself, uh, part of eCampus Ontario, that that uh, collection of uh, of institutions doing open badges within the Ontario ecosystem. Okay, um, I'm um, cognizant I've gone a little over time. I want to thank you all for your attention. Um, maybe we can uh, turn off the recording now, and this will okay. be put online on the Etherpad later on.